Hi. Today I tell you why you should install Ubuntu Server on an Azure IoT Edge node. Imagine a container vessel far out on the vast ocean. There is no internet available, so the crew spend their days watching offline movies on an old laptop. But after a night with too much alcohol, the laptop is broken and the crew is desperately in search for a replacement. They are lucky, because most PCs on board don't have a password protection for good reasons. So they turn to your brand new Azure IoT PC. But when they are trying to install a video player, they just see a boring Linux shell. You're lucky, because their movie USB stick is full of ransomware and will now only affect Windows PCs. Job done, let's get started. So let's start by downloading Ubuntu Server. Go to ubuntu.com, click on Products, Ubuntu Server, then download Ubuntu Server, click on Download again, and this starts the download of a 2GB ISO file. After downloading the Ubuntu Server image, we can create a USB stick. I use a tool called Rufus. I already inserted my USB stick and the USB stick is automatically selected. Now I can choose the ISO file. I click on select and select my downloaded USB file. And that's all. I can click on start. I select write in ISO image mode recommended. And then I get a warning that the grub bootloader defers, but I ignore that and click on yes. Then I get another warning that all my memory from the USB stick will be destroyed. I click on OK. And now I have to wait for some minutes until the ISO image has been successfully written. After the USB stick has been created, you would usually plug it into your PC and boot it. For this tutorial, I'm using Oracle VirtualBox so I can show you the screen. First, I have to select the language. I select English. I get a hint that a new installer is available, so I select to update to the new installer. Now I have to select my keyboard layout. As you might have heard from my accent, I select German. Next I have to select the variant. I select the minimized Ubuntu server. As you might have heard in my introduction, we don't want anybody to log into our Azure IoT Edge. So we select Ubuntu server minimized. Then we select done. Now we have to select our Ethernet interface. I recommend to plug in your PC to an Ethernet adapter during installation, so you get the newest version. In our case, we don't have a proxy address, so I click on Done. Now we have to select the server for the update packages. Later I will show you how to skip updates, but for now we select Done. In the next step we can do hard disk partitioning. I leave it as it is and select Done. Now I get a summary about the partitions who will be created. That's fine. I select Done. Now I get a warning that my hard disk will be erased. I say continue. Now I need to select a server name. I call it Discotake. And I also need to select a username. I also say Discotake. I also need to choose a password. It's mandatory. After I select done, I get a dialog that I could choose Ubuntu Pro. But this costs money. And I want everything for free, so I select continue. We can select an open SSH server, but we don't need it, so we select done. In this next screen, we have the possibility to install additional software. Since we don't need it right now, we can go to Done. Now the installation is starting. Let's wait. The installation is finished. We can reboot now. After rebooting, our Ubuntu server is readily installed and we can log in. We type in our username, discotheque, and the password. Now we're logged in. Now let's disable automatic updates. In order to do this, first we need to install a text editor. So I type sudo apt install nano. This will install nano. The next thing to do is to edit the file 20 auto upgrades. Here we need to make sure that all the values are set to zero. Then I press Ctrl and X and I say yes, save it. This will disable automatic updates. Now let's start with the process itself. Let's install Azure IoT Edge Node. So now it's time to create an Azure IoT Hub. You need an Azure account and you need to go to portal.azure.com. Here you can create a resource. Go to Internet of Things and create an IoT Hub. As you can see, I quickly need to create a resource group, which I do now. And I also need to give an IoT Hub name. In order to save money, 
I select the most simple tire, the basic tire, and I also select the smallest daily message limit. And that's it. I go to review and create. Now everything is checked for validity and we are ready to create our IoT hub. So my deployment is complete and I can go to my resource. We want to connect our IoT Edge PC to our IoT hub. In order to do this, we need to create a device. Please note that there are two different kinds of devices. You can have devices here and you can have IoT Edge devices. IoT devices have a stable connection to the internet and IoT Edge devices can be sometimes offline. In our case, we have a vessel on the ocean without internet, so we click on IoT Edge. Now we add an IoT Edge device. We need to give a name as a unique device ID. I call it discotheque device. We can leave the rest as it is and click on save. Now we have to wait until our IoT Edge device has been created and we click on refresh. Now we see our IoT Edge device. Now you click on the IoT Edge device and here you find, between other values, the primary connection string. You need to copy it to the clipboard because it's needed by our IoT Edge PC. The IoT Edge PC uses this connection string in order to connect to the IoT Hub. Before we return to our Ubuntu server, let me tell you that there is an official document from Microsoft which describes what you have to do. It contains a lot of text, a lot of commands. So you're watching this tutorial because you don't want to read through all this. So let's get to the shortcut. What you have to do is to do some installation commands, which you can simply copy from the document here. It's for Ubuntu 22. So when you're back on your Ubuntu server, you have a painful problem. You would need to type in all the commands manually. But there's a good workaround. You can remotely connect to your Ubuntu server via PuTTY. There's a command called hostname minus big I, which will give you your IP address. So this is your IP address. Now you can start PuTTY or another SHH client and type in the IP address. Now you can log in with your credentials and you're connected. In my last tutorial, somebody wrote me that I should make the font bigger. Voila, big font. So first of all, let's install IoT Edge. Next, we need to install the container engine. Please note that I simply copy the shell code from the Microsoft example and paste it to the shell. Yes? So what do we need the Mobi engine for? The Mobi engine is something similar to Docker. It's just a container engine, so our Azure IoT Edge software will run inside a container. Next, we need to edit etc docker daemon.json and we need to paste the log driver local command to there. I press Ctrl and X and I press Y for saving the text and that's it. Now we need to restart the docker engine. Now we need to install the Azure IoT Edge runtime. Yes, please continue. Everything went fine. Now we need to paste the device connection string here. So we take the whole command, put it onto the shell, then we remove the empty connection string now we can paste that into our shell and then we need to apply the configuration changes. Let's have a look at the configuration file just to making sure that everything worked as expected. Yeah, that's it. We see our device connection string. The next step is the deployment of the modules. So we go to our Azure IoT portal. At this point of time we should somehow check that our Azure IoT PC is connected to the hub, so we click on IoT Edge. And when we see the device status, we get a runtime error response which says that the deployment is not ready. This is fine. This is a response from our PC. Let's continue. We click on our device ID, and now we need to deploy some modules to our Edge device. So we click on Set Modules. So here, you could add a reference to your Azure Container Registry. This is the place 
where your containers for the IoT Edge device are being stored and you could also add your own IoT Edge modules. For this tutorial, it's sufficient to just do the basic deployment, which means that we deploy two infrastructure containers. We click on Review and Create, and you can see that the Azure IoT Edge agent is being installed and the Azure IoT Edge Hub. The purpose of these containers is to store the offline information. So while your vessel is offline, the engines might still work, send sensor data, and this sensor data would be cached in the Azure IoT Hub. The Azure IoT Edge agent on the other side is managing the connection between your Azure IoT Edge PC and the IoT Edge Hub. So let's click on Create and see what happens. You can see that the Edge agent is running, but there was an error deploying the Edge Hub. I can click on that error. Okay, this is somehow strange. I can just restart the Edge Hub and see what happens. Yes, I want to restart it. Welcome to Microsoft. I can refresh it. And after restarting, my IoT Hub seems to be working. And after reloading the device page, I see that my Edge Hub is running. Now let's go to our Edge PC and also do some checks. The first command to try out is the so-called IoT Edge system status. It tells us that our services from Azure IoT are running. Please note that this doesn't say anything about the containers itself. The next test which we can do is the so-called IoT Edge check. This check tells us that generally everything is fine with our system. There are some warnings. One of the warnings tells us we should use a fixed DNS server address. And another warning tells us that after redeployment, our module data might be gone. For this tutorial, we can ignore these errors. One last command I wanted to show you from the tutorial is the IoT Edge list. This command simply lists the containers which are running. You see that the Edge Agent and the Edge Hub are running fine. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you have some questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and I will try to answer them all. And you might ask yourself, is there really a vessel on the vast ocean running Azure IoT Hub? I can tell you no. Before the project was even half finished, we ran out of budgets and all people were fired. Welcome to capitalism.